So, I was inspired by this Terraria title label animation and I wanted to make something similar in my game. And now, I'm going to teach you how to do that with twins. So, here we are. Before we start, I want to show you a couple of examples when I used twins for animating something in my game. So, okay, we have our label that we want to animate. It's called title and it has some text in it. First of all, before we animate it, make sure you have set up the pivot offset right. Because here, as you can see, right now it's half of the size. Look what's the difference between different pivot offset positions. Hopefully you understand what the importance of this small little cross here. Before we start working with the code, we need to add the twins themselves, as children of the title. Rename them. Now attach a script to the title. And we can start work. First of all, create reference variables to the twins. Done. For every animation, we're going to create a specific method that will animate only one property at the same time. We're going to create method animate rotation. In order to work, twin must be set up properly. It's quite useful to first set up the range or the values you want to get when you animate something. Just as I did, I created limited variable of the type vector2 and first x value represents the minimum value of the property and the y value defines the max value. Now we can set up the twin. I am not going to cover the basics in this tutorial because I have already made a tutorial on twin and if you want to check it out I'm going to link the tutorial in this video. But right now I'm just going to write the code. So now we have the twin animating rectal rotation property. The values I've put here, they are just random and what I liked. You can tweak them around and find for yourself what suits you the best. That was the first phase. We have animated the property to get the first value here. Now we need to animate it so it gets to the second property. But before it starts animating to the second property, we need to fully complete this one. And that's where the method yield comes in handy. As a first argument I write the node I'm going to work with and the second argument is the signal that this node emits and that I must wait for. So the execution of this method is stopped until the rotate twin emits twin all completed signal. The interpolation of the second phase is quite similar, so we can just copy and paste code and change a few values. And in the end, in order to make the animation cycled, don't forget to call this method once again. Now let's check what we've got. We have twin animating to the first value, we have the twin animating the property to the second value. Let's see what how it's working right now. And it doesn't work. Why? Because we forgot to call the method. We cycled it, calling itself in the end of the method body, but we didn't call this method anywhere else. So make a ready function in which the animate rotation will be called. Boom! Here we go. Now it's working. And it was quite easy, isn't it? Now I'm going to add scaling animation of it. I'm not going to cover everything just as I did with the rotation, I'll just show you the code so you understand everything on yourself. So yeah, that's it. And of course, don't forget to call this method once again in the ready function. And as you can see, it's working. The rotation and the scaling works absolutely fine. On the screen, right now, I am also showing you a small footage of some other animations you can do with it. It's really a powerful tool for animating the user interfaces or 
menus or anything else. In my games I even used twins for enemies. <laughs> so yeah, it works not only for the interfaces, it's quite a big thing. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it and if you did, like, share and subscribe. See you next time! Thank you.